Let me show you my countryside through these old headlights. We can take this road as far as you want to go. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Reviving My Uncle's Farm. What we have done, we have fell one tree, cut it up, and now we just have to cut the last tree down. You can be here for this momentous moment with me. And done. Time to clear it up. And when this is all um, cut into pieces, I will load it into trailer and take it to the wood cell point. Um, and while we're on the road, we're gonna talk about our plan for today. So, see you in a second. Okay. Both trees are done now. And while I load them up, we can talk about our plans. So, as I said, first thing what we're gonna do is uh, take the wood to the cell point. And then we're gonna go to the store. Because we are going to arrange the lease of the tractor. We were looking at in the previous episode. Uh, it's going to be John Deere. So, I have decided on the Deere because uh, of the size. Because of the maneuverability. And uh, one important factor was also the price. Since uh, it is 4,000 pounds cheaper, it is going to help us a lot, um, you know, to have uh, 4,000 pounds more uh, rather than having 25 horsepower more and uh, 4,000 pounds less. So this is uh, one stage of the plan. Uh, and another, I have been talking with... Uh, I mean, I did get uh, some information back about the uh, stump grinder. They do have one available, but uh, the trick is it's not suitable for a front loader tractor or it's not a three-point hitch uh, mounted. But they said that they have uh, some sort of uh, connector uh, that we can use to... Uh, hook it up to a front loader so we're gonna try it on the Massey Ferguson and try if it has enough horsepower to run it I am not really sure if it will run it but you know you can try and if it doesn't work we just have to find another solution for that um, and uh, yeah uh, while we do that we're gonna assign all the paperwork for the John Deere and when we return it, I believe the deer will be ours to take home. So, um, yeah, there's going to have to be another uh, logistical problem to solve because I can't drive two tractors at the same time. Uh, so I'm probably going to ask someone from the uh, shop to help me. Um, and then I'll just uh, drive him home with my uh, truck, you know, with my... Uh, a jeep so yeah this looks like to be an exciting day uh, if I man if I can I will probably be uh, taking home a plow uh, so we can start uh, making our own fields uh, now it's perfect time for this because the nature is uh, really not doing anything it's in the middle of December and uh, the the fields we I, I mean to plow are uh, a meadow on the top and uh, here in the lower part when it's more flat uh, I want to have a grain field I've been thinking maybe oats maybe sorghum maybe something else I'm not quite sure but uh, something that makes straw because we need straw for our uh, calves and later on for cows um, when we expand our operation with the cattle. Okay. It looks like I'm gonna fit everything in the trailer. Which is good. 
Oh yeah, and I did get paid 400 pounds for the um, from the council for road clearing. And I did have an interested person for is this gonna fall? No. Um, for the mower, the vintage mower that we are selling. Uh, so it, I hope all that goes through. Um, I said I wanted to sell it for at least one thousand pounds, and I hope I can get that. I have listed it for one hundred, one thousand and three hundred pounds on the marketplace. So we have a little space for haggling, if that's the right word. Okay, let's take a look at the trailer. It's getting quite full, but it's so. Okay. Oh, yeah, I thought this was gonna fall off. Um, yeah, the trailer is looking quite full. I just have to make sure nothing falls off during the transportation. All right, and here, this one looks shady. Not shady. Uh, I, uh, there's a different word I'm looking for. This one looks like it's gonna fall. Okay. Just pull this one in a bit. Yeah, perfect. And adjust this one. Okay. So it looks like we are getting better at stacking wood chunks. And now, to drive for the first time without any trees in the yard. And another thing, I believe we're gonna have to uh, do some feeding for our calves. Okay, well, I must say this yard looks a lot more open, a lot, spaci a lot more spacious uh, without the trees standing. Now just to take care of these stumps. And we're golden. I'm not gonna bore you with the drive to the cell station, I'm just gonna show you uh, the unloading and how much we get paid for it. We are coming up to the timber yard. The unloading process is going to be exactly the same as it was in the previous episodes, so nothing too exciting. Uh, come on! Sure. No, I have to put it in low range. And probably a gear or two higher. Yeah, that's it. Although this Massey Ferguson has really low horsepower, uh, with the low range it can pull quite an impressive amount of uh, weight up a hill. So here we are, I'm gonna turn off the lights, turn off the tractor and start working on the pile. The good thing is we do not have to throw it very far, it's just over here on the ground. And another delivery I'm expecting is the exhaust for this tractor. Uh, it's a straight up pipe uh, versus to the uh, front exhaust like we have right now, which is not optimal. Um, so yeah, this is... This is one thing I'm excited for. 
new tractor, new exhaust for the old tractor, uh, and actual agricultural work. I really hope we can get a plow that fits uh, the John Deere and put the deer straight to the test, right on the field. Where it feels most like home. There's quite a lot of pieces. Uh, on the other hand, it is quite a lot of trees. It's a shame it's not uh, hardwood like uh, oak or something like that. Uh, that would pay a lot more than birch. But you know, you can't complain. We had this on the farm. Uh, as I said in one of the earlier se earliest episodes, uh, when uh, people leave a place, the birch is usually the first tree to start growing there. Not sure why, but I believe it's a fast-growing tree and it uh, takes roots quite easily and fast, you know. So that is probably a factor. And that is probably the reason why we had so much birch on our yard. Just a few pieces more. Okay, that one went too far, I guess. So I wonder, wonder how much we're gonna get for this pile. The previous pile was like a scarecrow. Um, because I did not... I did not trim the branches. I did not cut the tree so nice. So... Let's see if we can get a better price. Okay, ready? One thousand and something. Okay, well that is a better price. One thousand two hundred and some more will be from here. I can see one log that has fallen over over there. Okay, so that actually paid for the chainsaw and 43 pounds. Okay, so 1,230 something pounds, which is not so bad. Not bad at all, actually. Okay, cool. Uh, next up, the dealer shop. Here we are at the shop. And that is one brave pe brave human in the middle of winter in shorts. Uh, you have them in every country, <laughs> those brave humans. <laughs> All right, let's park the tractor, turn the lights off and go speak to the dealers. Okay, this whole setup cost us 183 pounds if I'm correct and we also got the um, exhaust which was 230 pounds it's not new but it's an exhaust and we have it in a bag right over here we're gonna mount it back when we come uh, to the farm shop let me see they said that because my tractor is so light, I need a rear weight also. Gotta be careful not to hit our future tractor. Uh, they said they're gonna set up the papers and when we come back we, back, we can sign it and then we can take the John Deere home. The offer stands at it, as it was before. Okay, so rear weight. Ooh, it's a heavy one. I hope my axles will hold it. Yeah, but John Deere. 
our lease to own tractor. So let's hook up this adapter. Okay. Yeah, so this is the stump grinder. It's a very robust machine. You would not want to get your hand in or face or anything else. As a matter of fact. Let me just turn it on to test it. Okay, it seems to be working. Turn it off. And let's go back to the farm. Now to try at this beast. How should I start with this? Okay, I can see the blade right now. I can't see the blade now. Okay. Okay, well. I guess I should start just a little bit back and let's turn it on, face it away. Can't see, is it working? Okay completely gone amazing that's exactly I was what I was looking for all right let's go to the next stump and it's working rather fast Okay, another stump gone. Okay, the Massey doesn't have enough power to run the stump grinder and <laughs> itself at the same time. Yeah, no. Let's put it into first gear. This is making a quick meal out of this. Great. Since it looks like I'm going to be too fast for the dealers to finish the lease contract for me, uh, for the John Deere, I am going to fit a new exhaust in the meantime while I wait for them to, do, to finish their job. I've seen in some videos that people have uh, rear mounted, like three point hitch uh, mounted uh, stump grinders and they can move it left and right which gives them a lot of uh, maneuverability I don't have here I just have up and down
so I gotta be looking over the tractor's shoulder all the time. Like this. So I can see what I'm doing. As far as I remember, there were no trees at the back of the barn. Okay, so just those two left. Okay, these are clear. Over here it's clear. I don't see any down the middle lane. If I don't get a, a prize for the biggest transformation of a farmyard this year, I'm gonna make it myself and <laughs> give it to me because this really is a whole new farmyard. Well, not exactly, but you know what I mean, you know, it's... It's good, it's good. Oh, I turned it off. Turned it on too soon. So what? All the stumps grinded. This was way easier. Hello calves. You resting? Yeah, that's right. You should rest. Okay, no stumps here. I'm going to make a foot check. I really don't want to return the stump grinder and then find another stump. That would be, you know, dumb. And costly and wasteful of money. Alright, looks okay. Well, everything checks out. And I gotta say, there seem to be no stumps left. Which was the plan, and it's exactly what I wanted. While I'm here, I'll just open this, take the tractor back, and then try to mount new exhaust. Changes, changes. Wow. Completely different yard. I wonder how it will look like in a year or two. Okay, stop. Let me just think. Will I be able to mount it with... Probably not, I need to take this off. So first this. How about now, does it go off? Okay, now it goes off. Just... Carefully. We don't want to scratch it more than it already is. Alright. This should be a pretty easy job. Pretty straightforward. There is the ex exhaust manifold. Uh, so we need to unhook it over there. And it's probably hooked up at the bottom somewhere. Take it away and then fit the new one. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes for it to cool down. And while I do this, I'm gonna prepare the tools I need. Uh, let me just do another thing. Let's put down the weight. Yeah, okay. Take the pressure off the axle. Okay. I'll be back probably in, I don't know, some minutes. 
when all this is done. Okay, and for once this really was an easy fix, a quick fix, and it went very well, in my opinion. Yeah, look at it. It's a vertical exhaust now. So actually, as I said, we did uh, unbolt it here and at the uh, bottom and took away the old one and just bolted on the new one. It's not as heavy as the old one was. So this should work perfectly. Great. Let's try to attach the front loader now. Slowly, carefully, again. Okay, the bolts are in. Let's hook him up on both sides. Let's hook up the thing I'm above. Okay, and we're ready to go. And yes, the smoke blows over us, not into our face when we drive forward. This is exactly what I wanted. And this is exactly what I got. Amazing. Okay, well, I'm really happy with this. Um, so yeah, let's go back and get ourselves even more happy with the new tractor. Ah, this is so good. How small changes can make such a big difference. <laughs> Amazing. Getting back to the shop. But before we return the tools, I'm going to refuel this tractor because it's getting quite low on fuel. And then we're gonna take our new John Deere. and get it registered so it's road legal so it gets license plates and everything it needs with our magnificent top exhausts and our demolishing tools So they said that we just need to put the tools down over here at the old combine. And here we are, 1,555 pounds later, we have our John Deere, which is leased to own. It's in immaculate condition and we also get this plow which is 1.5 1 meter wide and it requires 80 horsepower to pull. So we have 100 horsepower in the John Deere which means 80 horsepower should be more than sufficient to, to be pulled with it. So the shop allowed us to leave the Massey Ferguson and the trailer over there while we take this fancy tr tractor home. Before I hook up the plow, I'm just gonna sort out all the registrations, th re registration things. So we are load, road. Okay, my tongue is really twisting. So we are road legal. And this is the place over here. Gonna put it straight on the ramp. Turn it off and let's see how we get on. Be right back. While the tractor is up, I can go underneath and check everything with the guys. But yeah, it really seems in an immaculate condition. Of course, it's not new, but it was refurbished. 
And yeah, everything looks perfect. Okay, everything's set. We are going out of the MOT now. And back into the yard to hook up the plow. This is going to be a massive upgrade because of the horsepower, which is one thing. And the cabin, which is another thing, because in the Masi I was outside exposed to all the elements. But in here I at least have heating, shade and protection from the wind. So yeah, a massive upgrade. And it came quite soon. But the tractor is an essential piece of equipment, so there's not much to think about. Let's lift this plow. Let me just check for a second, does it fold? Yeah, it folds. All right. And our journey home in the new tractor starts right now. Sometimes. Oh. What a neat noise it made. It makes the blinkers. So yeah, top speed is approximately approximately the same as the Massey Ferguson's. Okay, back at the farm. Okay, it gets in easily. Hello chickens, don't be afraid. Okay, so how do we do this? I need to leave an open space over here for the access to manu uh, not not manure pit uh, to the silage pit. But how does it look if I make an incision over here? There's still plenty of space to go into the silage pit. go there we're gonna get quite a sizable field well anyway we can always plant grass if we don't like it so this is going to be it okay yeah no gears down second gear I don't want to go too fast no oh, 10 is too fast do we have a control Cruise control. Okay, seven seems okay. Around 1800 RPM seems okay. The line seems okay. But this is going to be quite a field, and we still have a lot of meadow left. Perfect. You know, looking from down there, you don't realize how big of a area we do own, actually, over here. Okay, so we wobbled a bit. Which is, again, understandable. This is my first time plowing. And I'm going to leave leave some grass at the end of the field. So first we're just gonna make the edges. Yeah, I leave some uh, 
what is it called, headland, where we can turn around while doing field work. Okay. Hug a little bit to the left over here. Not too much because of the tree. Now slowly turn around. And go over here. And again, we have to leave space so we can get into the shed through the door over there. And I think we should follow the dirt line. Okay, we got close to the edge. Now turn around and let's meet up with the plowed area from before. Okay, lift the plow up. Let me just step out and check how it looks like. Can't really see that well, but it looks like a field. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the drone up and let you watch in peace and with some good music how I make this field. And yeah, it's our first field on the farm. Stay tuned. Okay, last few passes and we are done with the first field on our farm. It works really well with this tractor, so I'm happy with the choice we made. Although it was a bit slow. But you know, I'm still learning, well, still new at this and uh, you know, it's not really worth pushing too hard or going too fast because you make too many mistakes which in the long run cost you more money and time and resources so this is perfect right now
And I believe one left. And this is us done. Let me get off the soil for a second. Nope. I wanted to turn the plow. As I said, I'm still new at this and the controls might uh, confuse me sometimes. Nothing too major, but... Mm. Freshly plowed soil. Well, it looks quite, quite good. No rocks. It is a bit... ashy at uh, points, this soil, but I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, this field came out a bit bigger than I expected, than I visualized in my head. Which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. So I gotta talk with some farmers uh, what is the best crop to plant to give us the most um, straw yield. I'm not interested in anything else because whatever it is, it's going to be enough to feed our chicken. They really don't use that much. But uh, straw, yeah, straw is going to be needed for the cows and for the total mixed ration. Eventually, when we get the trailer to mix the total mixed ration. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm thinking ahead, you know, when you're a farmer, you have to plan ahead because you cannot control seasons, you cannot control growth. Uh, all you can do is do your best and hope it uh, turns out the way you planned. Nothing truly eventful happened on the way there and back. So I just skipped that part, I did not record it. Um, Mark was the one driving our tractor, the John Deere back. He just uh, went to use the toilet for a bit and I'm gonna park the trailer in the shed in the meantime. I'm gonna park the John Deere and then we'll take the car, load the eggs and I'll take Mark back to the vehicle shop. And here is our field. Now I just hope I left enough room for us to turn in. Yeah, of course I did. Of course. These dolly trailers are easier to take around the corner uh, because you can take a tighter, a sharper turn without uh, hitting the back of your tractor. But they are more difficult to reverse at least <laughs> reverse in a in a good manner okay turn this off I think this is going to be the resting place of our John Deere oh next door yeah this is going to be it's layer. <laughs> uh. Okay. Yeah, this is perfect. I want to be able to see it from outside through the windows, you know. So, this is where the John Deere sleeps. Looks quite nice uh, with all the decoration inside. <laughs> Good. Okay. I'll uh, get in the car, load the eggs, and then I suppose Mark is going to show up. Oh, 
no, no, no. I still have the trailer attached. Get back in there. I thought I unhooked it. Wait. Let me check something first. Do I need the chicken feed? Because if I need chicken feed and I'm going to the vehicle shop... Yeah, I'm gonna buy another bag of chicken feed. So let's keep the trailer on. Because if I'm going to the trailer shop, uh, I can load the chicken feed in the same time. So I uh, I need one trip less. What am I doing? I said I'm going to load the eggs. Okay. Let's open the trunk. Yeah, good little chickens. With a nice view on the field that is going to grow your special food. The eggs are going in the trunk because they are... Oh. They are fragile and I don't want them to jump around in the trailer. The trailer doesn't have such a good ex uh, suspension as the car, so it jumps around quite a lot. Okay, now let's just wait for him and we'll see you back at the store. So yeah, the shop seems to be my second home now. Okay, another bag is bought. They say that I can load it myself. I'm gonna pull a bit forward. Stop, open the trailer. And use the forklift for this. These big bags are around 600 kilograms of uh, wheat, so I cannot lift it by hand. I want to go forward. So let's try the forklift. The unloading is not a problem because I just tear it up and use a scoop. And uh, where is this big food? Oh no. <laughs> a mistake again. Hello. Kind sir. Yeah, this is pig food. I need chicken food. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, be right back. Mistake corrected. <laughs> I got chicken feed now. <laughs> uh, can you imagine coming back home with a whole big bag of something you do not actually need? Uh, that would be some adventure. All right, all right. So I should put the tines a bit back, a bit more to the back like this, yeah. See, I used to drive a forklift in, in, um, when I was, uh, what's it called, a student worker in a company when my mom was employed. And uh, yeah, that was a fun thing to do. I really love that forklift thing. Okay, beacon off, engine off. I think this is a gas powered, I mean liquid gas, not uh, petrol. Okay, so I did not load it correctly. Because as I was talking a few episodes back, you always have to put uh, most of the weight in front of the axle of the trailer. But since I do not have any means of correcting this right now, I'm going to leave it and drive it with care. So a quick stop at... Uh, at the pub. To 
sell the eggs. So if I do a quick calculation in my head, we are not really making a profit with chickens. Not yet. Because the chicken feed is quite expensive and we do not get a lot for the eggs. Okay, let me take the eggs out. I hope they survived. Yeah, they did. 68, yeah, so we would need 10 days, at least 10 days to make a bit of profit. But I'm not sure we went 10 days uh, without feeding the chickens. The chickens take, took a whole, the whole big bag of feed. Which is awesome, this should be enough for a while. Let me park the car. And the last thing we're gonna do today is feed the cows. Because they are also running low on food. And then we're gonna take a break for today. We've done enough. We have a new tractor, a new field. Oh yeah, I was talking about uh, showing you the lease payments. Let me just get this in so I can think straight and I can open my telephone and I'll, sh and I'll show you everything. Okay, so the deal is uh, we got the tractor for 20,500 pounds. And we have leased it for 1,045 to pay on the spot. And 1,045 pounds was paid right there before we even got the lease. Uh, if we would like to purchase the tractor now, it remains the 20,090 remains. So it's 410 pounds less than it was the purchase price. And uh, the deal is that every day we paid 205 pounds just to have the tractor and for every work hour we pay 430 pounds so whatever we pay each day it's for the work hour or maybe it's for the day lease uh, gets deducted from this price and after three years so 36 months yeah 36 months uh we can pay it off, we can return it, or we can keep leasing, but after 36 months, the base price, which is here, does not uh, reduce. Okay, so if you understand, we each payment we made for this lease gets deducted from this price, and uh, what remains, we pay for the tractor and its hours. So this is quite a good way to have equipment because 205 pounds a day is not a lot and 430 pounds for every hour we use it it's also not a, not a lot especially because this gets deducted from the price and we can buy the tractor afterwards so yeah that's quite a good deal we got on the tractor and now where did i put the massey over here is it unhooked? It is. Yeah, and horizontal exhaust. Not horizontal. Straight up. Amazing. Okay, it doesn't seem to be too heavy. And I think the fork is over here. Yes, it is exactly where I left it.
while we're going over here, I'll just open the door so I don't need to do it when I come back loaded. And yes, little calves, I'm going to give you some silage. So yeah, maybe a pint or two at the pub will not be such a bad idea to speak with the farmers, with the locals over here and ask them for some advice how to handle this new field. What to do next? Do we fertilize it? Do we cultivate it? Do we seed it first and then fertilize it? So yeah, a lot of questions and not a lot of knowledge from my side. So this is going to be quite an interesting journey. But I wonder, I wonder, wonder how this is going to pan out. I can already imagine the gold field of wheat or barley or I don't know something similar there seems to be quite a big bump over here I'm gonna need to take care of that also in the future but yeah this is where I'm gonna leave you. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you had a good time. If you have any suggestions on how to um, how to do the farming bit, uh, what to plant, uh, what gives the most straw yield, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, you can write in the comments the, the suggestions you think are the most appropriate for next action and yeah thanks for watching see you next time bye bye